It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. Let me start off by saying Please I'm start. so happy that you agreed to watch, finally watch one of the movies that I've said I've said in the past. I have a collection of VHSs from my childhood that I constantly played over summer vacation. And weirdly, <laughs> this movie was one of them. Granted, I didn't understand half of the jokes because A, not a big sports guy. No. I know enough about sports now, but I'm 28 years old and I talk to enough people to know the general rules. I would say you're still missing half of the sports jokes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then B, just very raunchy that I didn't understand any of the sex jokes because as a eight-year-old, What's sex, right? I don't know. I did not understand any of the innuendos. And I remember this film from being on the shelf at Hollywood Video uh -huh. uh, and just always walking past it. How come? Okay, so like, why did this never interest you? Why did it take uh, me? Because I didn't get to pick films. My parents, again, I don't know if you realize that this as sense. a child, I never got to pick anything. No, really. um, but a, a movie with two guys holding big balls uh, was never going to pass. With Jenny McCarthy in the middle, too. They threw her on the cover. What? As a selling point. I, yeah, she was on the cover. Yeah. I man. always get this movie and um, what's the Siamese twin baseball movie? There's a baseball movie where Siamese twins are Yeah, where like two guys are, are like stuck together. Stuck on stuck you. Stuck on you with Matt Damon yeah, and maybe, another dude. Maybe they don't play baseball No, they're just two Siamese twins and maybe there's... I think I'm just getting these two films conflated. I think so too. I've always, I always have. Okay, well now that I showed you it. So much better than what I thought what it was. What you expected, right? Especially like what's nice. You've been primed now because you've been watching some South Park lately, right? Uh, quite a bit, yeah. So now you're uh, kind of accustomed to Matt Stone's and Trey Parker's really off-the-wall humor, which I'm so surprised that at this age it took you this long to... Because your humor is like right up their alley. It's just it's just humor to me. I mean, because you're a Team America guy too, which is I them. Like Team America, yeah. You've I referenced do, them do, multiple do. times I, throughout I, our friendship. You know what? Everybody has AIDS. Oh, I was going to say it without, yeah, because you know what? I've never seen the movie. What? Maybe that's something we could do. I would be oh, willing to do God. that. Are you ready to, uh, let's welcome the baddies, dude. I, you know what? I would like to do it. Okay. You do it this time. Okay. Bienvenidos, 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 Again, los it's baddies. Spanish. It's more confident this time. I'm glad. Welcome, 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 baddies. Yeah, welcome to another episode of ICBTB Podcast. Podcast. My name is uh, Christian Baltazar. My name is Alejandro Middleton. And uh, I will be doing... Local and um, public abortions. What? You can find me at callchristiandoespublicabortions.com. It's not my website. Honestly, guys, I'm not gonna a, hop on. honestly, like we should really be. It's a, a pro choice, guys. Let's go. I see BTV's pro choice. Yeah, it's a, it's a little crazy right now. What's going on? <laughs> um, but basketball. Let's <laughs> talk about that. Basketball is an incredible film that I I wish I would have seen at least twenty years ago. You know, I love. You know, I wish I would have seen this so long ago. I know that you like a movie when you text me five minutes into watching it, saying this is fucking incredible. Well, not not only that, I just love that it was all filmed on one. Like soundstage, yeah, clearly, yeah, uh, and it was done with very low amount of money. Yes. I don't want to say it quite yet, um, but also this movie looks better than a lot of movies we've seen filmed. Yeah, like within the last five years, like we've seen some movies where just like the framing and the being in focus, or mm -hmm. just like the shot, looks like it's from the eighties or the seventies, but it was filmed in like twenty. 20. Yeah. This movie looks I wasn't It looks good it for a 1998 really, film made by two silly dudes. Yeah. 98 blows my mind. I was This is why. It's because these two guys, they made a hit animated TV show that's made out of like paper cuttings, right? That's what South Park is. I uh, I think it's felt. Yeah. Felt and so like they were able to make, you know, you don't have much, but let's turn into this big thing. They didn't have much here, but they I think they spent a good amount of money on some of the notable actors, right? We got Jenny McCarthy up in there. We got the girl from uh, Baywatch. I think her name is Yasmeen Bleeth. That is her name. Right? And um, who's the guy that chokes on a hot dog? He's something, too. Like, there are some pretty notable... And uh, the cameos. They actually got Reggie Jackson in well, here. I mean, Reggie Jackson is a Hall of Famer, like, no doubt. It's just one of those things where it's like, why is Reggie Jackson... And Okay, hang on a second. They also right. have Al Michaels in here being a huge perv. They have Bob yeah. Costas in this film. They have the guy from fucking Unsolved Mysteries in this film. And That's legitimately all, him. They're just all doing their thing. But silly. Like the guy from Unsolved Mysteries was just fine with getting a bucket of water just thrown in his face and I, saying the F word. I, I love Unsolved Mysteries. You have no idea. <laughs> 
how how much unsolved mysteries Your I watched as a kid. The spectrum of what type of media, like with what type of entertainment you digest, is wild. My favorite episode, not to digress too far, because we will get into the film eventually. Yeah. Um, but my favorite episode of unsolved mysteries is the one about the cloud that was in a parking lot, and it just Stop. was like floating in a parking Stop, lot. Stop, really? That's and they're like, like, could it be aliens or a ghost? And then it ended up being like foam from a factory that like wind. Oh, so it was solved. <laughs> this is a solved mystery. <laughs> it was definitely solved. Yeah. Okay. Unsolved mystery. A lot of unsolved mysteries were solved by the end of the episode. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You should. Honestly, bro. I'll go back and watch all You got to get back on unsolved mysteries. All right. Anyway. Let's get into it, dude. We well, watched a film called Basketball. Basketball. It was rated R uh, and was released in there in 1998 and has a runtime of one hour and 48 minutes or 108 minutes minutes uh it has an incredibly low rating of 38 percent by tv guide but they're only no tv so why are they rating a movie yeah uh they have a 41 percent on rotten tomatoes and a 6.5 out of 10 on imdb solid icbtb numbers so i'm like it makes sense to raunchy the critics aren't gonna like it but us being two dudes we loved it uh this movie has a google rating christian well what do you think the google rating is i'm gonna say like 85 percent no, it's uh, you're completely wrong. It's seventy four percent. Oh, really yeah. low? You know, I think people don't appreciate it. I think you know, if, if they make fun of every single sport, so a lot of the, like the jocks I see could watch this and be like, "That's, that's not, not true. That's not funny." But it's a hundred percent like varied. because like okay, fill me in uh, before you do <laughs> yes, the synopsis. Fill me in um, before like about sports in the nineties, what they're making fun of. So like sports teams were just like bouncing around like it was just very yeah right about the time where players had no devotion to the city and it was all about making money Mm. and at the same time teams were trading players as if they were commodities just for more money or less money stadiums were being bought up by companies like at&t or monster energy or pg&e or oracle or you know all these things instead of being like yankee stadium Mm -hmm. or dodger stadium it now became uh johnny bill blue boys fucking dishwasher service well the joke in here it was like maxi tampon stadium yeah which is it which is how it is now that's why like nascar is all the like there's college bowl games that are like the tostitos bowl mm-hmm. and shit it's all commoditized Just and sold sponsored out and, by something uh and then the, the whole joke of interleague play which was a thing that baseball did try and make it fun so you could be like yeah the giants will play the a's like a couple of times this year and uh-huh. people are like oh okay yeah i guess i will go see that i guess I, that is fun but then after a while that kind of gets lame so now for them to be like inter sports league where it's like yeah. a baseball player playing a football player is exactly the next step that they would yeah they do. were predicting that kind like of stupid shit what that they next would do. right teams going they predicted uh oakland a's going to vegas which yeah. will happen in the next couple of years uh they they talked about the lakers going from minnesota to la where there are no, no lakes, lakes. Yeah. and it's just like they they really talk about a bunch of things that are so level four level five like sports fan they said knowledge. the raiders went from uh from oakland to, to LA, la back, back to, to oakland, oakland. And nobody, no one knows nobody in la noticed they still hated oakland they still hated al davis they still hated the raiders uh and then the the half of them that went to the chargers fans went back to raiders fans when the chargers left san diego mm-hmm. so it's like it doesn't even fucking matter they could make this movie today i and love they could keep that opening i love that chart of the u.s and you just see all these teams moving and it's just oh. a bunch of lines and all over going the states to alaska they're going outside of america yeah. and shit like different that. that's, countries that's you know the the 2022 uh nfl schedule just came out Uh uh-huh they're doing five games in england this year they're just they're trying so hard to just uh, to spice it up this movie is got 20 years ahead of its time really dude and this is like i said i watched this as a kid understood none of the references now that i've watched it, it's been a few years since i've seen it it's not i don't even feel it's very dated right because they're not flipping out phones or going to a pay phone or some of the references of the like computer. the celebrities that they talk about like they talk yeah, about like yeah. robert downey jr before he became <laughs> iron man dude. oh yeah they said yeah. little joey and bill clinton they make a bill clinton joke and yeah. like so, so yes that's very uh trey park and matt stone yeah matt stone, all ref- yeah exactly um so all referential yes synapses uh, coming at you right at you when slacker friends Joe Cooper and Doug Ramir are challenged to a pickup basketball game against some jocks, they counter by proposing it to play a game that they call basketball, which contains basketball and basketball. And in reality, they're improvising it all as it goes. But somehow the sport becomes a hit. A promoter from, forms a popular league, but after his death, the rival owner wants to change the rules to increase his profits. Also, the rival owner is a very thinly veiled 
uh, metaphor for Jerry Jones, the owner of the mm. Dallas Cowboys. Why? Was he in a situation similar Looks to Looks like him, dressed like him, talks like him, uh, acts like him. That just is, making fun of that dude. That's Jerry Jones, like, to a T. Dude, also, I love it. incredible funny joke that is, and yeah, it's just, also, fuck Jerry Jones, although he is, like, in, I think he's in the hospital today. He was checked into the hospital for a car crash. Ah, uh, so maybe you should take that back. Uh, you Until know he gets out, and then you can say fuck you again, once he's healthy. No, fuck the Cowboys, bro. Sure, then you can say the team as a whole, sure. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> yeah, make yeah. it general. Yeah, dude. Okay. Fuck I'll, Cowboys. <laughs> Um, I love how this movie starts off. I like how he says, when I grow up, I want to be... Uh, well, he catches he Reggie, he catches Reggie, Reggie Jackson's, Jackson's third home, home run, run of the World Series. Yeah. And he's like, when I grow up... I, I want to be a huge sports star. Just the Vegas dream. <laughs> like, what? And then it cuts to like 20 years later, and he's pissing in the bush. He says, when I grow up, I want to own a huge sports bar. <laughs> and <laughs> Reamer, I like how in the synopsis he said, Ramir... Made it's it very French. classy. It's French. Ramir. Ramir. Uh, Reamer, played by uh, Matt Stone, the funniest looking man I've ever seen with the weirdest looking glasses. <laughs> Just like they're waiting at the front Those door. Those are goggles. It's, yeah, he's wearing goggles. And they're obviously two losers. They are not even invited to what is this party of someone that went to their high school. And the, uh, he said, right before the door opens, he says, yeah, dude, I totally want to like bang Britney. And who opens the door? Britney's dad. I just okay. The only qualm that I have about that whole scene, what is as soon as they see Britney, the first thing she says is like, "Oh, you guys look exactly the same as you were in high school." Yeah, which I feel like is something people potentially say to us. And he was like, "Oh, cool," and she's like, no, "Which is our not. kind of reaction." To yeah, it. like really, we Thanks, are. Thanks, awesome. Thank you. And they're like, "Oh no!" Every interaction that they had, <laughs> and then like Cooper would just say like, "Well, you know." cock he would call everyone a cock <laughs> and that, this is the first five minutes of the film and so they talk to some dude who looks very posh and he has like a sweater over tied around his neck he's got the carlton sweater his name is um uh skid mark steve skid, <laughs> yo skid mark steve you still hanging around playing nintendo and like no actually i'm on my second year of med school and i'm getting ready for the summer games what are you guys up to we're still playing nintendo <laughs> and they're just like okay yeah like <laughs> cock and then it gets crazy. Like they go up to like Britney's mom's room, but that they didn't they didn't know was Britney's mom's room. And they open up the panty drawer, and it is they're just these are a bunch of heathens. Here's my question though: Are they heathens? They're sniffing clean panties. No, but still they. Like, I mean, if you're so, sniffing panties, don't you want to go for the the dirty hamper? No, that's worse. That's <laughs> another level of heathen. I don't know. Anyways, don't defend um, them. So they're going downstairs to play basketball with Carlton and Carlton's friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, immediately they realize that they've made a huge mistake because these mm. guys are like uh, BYU stars, apparently. Yeah, they're just like, probably they're, they're not that good. And they're like dunking there. They're making layups like it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're like, well, we don't want to play baseball. or We, we don't want to play, play regular basketball. basketball. We want to play, uh, play that shit that you learned in the suburbs. Yeah, you got to do like one point's here, three points is behind the meatballs. They say it's this is like how we played in the streets. <laughs> this is how we learned how to play it. And the guy's like, okay, yeah, yeah, we can play sure. it like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And they start psyching them out. Like, did that surprise you? Did you know anything about this movie, or were you just learning as it went along? Like, no, did you read I just, it? I just enjoyed, it. I just enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, I didn't know much about it because this is something that I. Do you think that this game is actually playable in real life? Uh, this game is horse. Yeah, but like, the they see they even make that joke of being like, "Oh, so it's horse," mm -hmm. and they're like, "No, no, 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 it's basketball." But it's like, no, this is like how horses played when you like talk shit to the other person. But I think what the hardest aspect is, I mean, I've never played horse where someone talks shit. Right in front of me like that. Uh, I guess, yeah. And I'm not spitting on you when I play horse. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. They get pretty vile <laughs> get with their psych outs here. Psych outs do become like a whole sport of its own. It's crazy. I would like the sport of psych out. Well, just in general? Yeah. What's so, like, so, like, it? Like, keep It doesn't matter if you make a basket or not. Just like who has the better psych out. Oh, so you just want two people talking shit to each other. <laughs> And it has yeah, nothing to do with the sport. I think it's called Yo Mama. That That's, a, yeah, which was a TV <laughs> show, right? <laughs> Speaking of which, I like how. While they are in Britney's mom's room, uh, Reamer finds a vibrator thinking it's Britney's. And he just goes in on it. He starts licking it like crazy. And then Britney comes from behind. He's like, what are you doing in my mom's room? And he, drop, <laughs> he drops into the drawer and it's like vibrating in the drawer, which he then uses later on as a psych out. Because he's like, oh, my God, one of Britney's, mums, Britney's mom's pubes. I like I, his psych outs are the best. Yeah. Because he has some like crafted like takes time to get into your head psych outs that and also he's squirting breast milk 
that into was, people's that, faces. That was not my favorite part of his character. But <laughs> He's drenching some guy's face in breast milk. There's a part where like it cuts away and then cuts back, and the guy is still being still, like drowned. He's like on his knees and like can't escape. It's just that much. <laughs> and he also does it at the very end from a distance. <laughs> I like when he opens up his shirt and it's uh, like. <laughs> It's the picture on his shirt is him fucking the guy's Dude. wife. It was like, yeah, uh, the guy's wife. He was like, hey, that's my wife. And then reveals the other half. And it's like him from behind. Naked behind her, too. Great. Okay. <laughs> Favorite character of all time is Squeak. I think he is absolutely incredible. Is Squeak our Otis? Squeak is all of us as we interchange, dude. As we've now that we've gotten older, we've all we are all each other's squeaks at some point, depending on how no, our day is going. I ain't dude. No, squeaky. no I, we I ain't a squeaky. Oh, when Otis and I are together in a room, sometimes we'll turn you into a squeak. No. Depends on the mood, man. No. Depends on the mood. Not me. But I love how they just bully the hell out of him. <laughs> Just like, hey, bitch, you're but a then, little bitch. But then also like have him in the trophy when they win and stuff yeah, like that. Like, like they like him. They love him. They consider him one of his best friends, right? <laughs> I do like that he sleeps in the drawer under the... <laughs> <laughs> With the teddy bear. This is in a locker room. And he hops on his back, doesn't he, when they leave? Yes. <laughs> yes, man. This whole movie is fucking ridiculous. This it's movie is crazy. Just absolutely insane. Packed with so many jokes. So fast. Uh, So... <laughs> What? Kareem Abdul Jabbar's in this movie. <laughs> he's in the uh, he's in the rival uh team owner's yeah. office or something. His, his goggles, his shoes, and Kareem. Yeah. And also uh Sigmund uh Sigmund uh, Sigmund and Freud. Right? Sigmund and Freud, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the magicians. And they Who mostly do these like are lion real people. magic. Yeah, they're in there. They're there. They look like wax models, but they move and no, it's actually them. That's the collector from the MCU. <laughs> yeah, that's that's who this guy is. Uh, I met Kareem Abdul Jabbar sidebar. You told me about this. You met him uh, when you were working at Cheesecake Factory. He shook Irvine. my hand. Yeah, big hands. I can imagine. You got. Yeah. You could grip two balls at once. I, should never, <laughs> I bet he could. Never should say that again. I um, um, I look. This is one of your favorite films. What is it that makes you like this film so much? Even though you aren't such a sports fan, like is it just <clears> the absurdity <throat> of it? Not even understanding some of the like deep references of it. Aside from the nostalgia from it being one of my childhood VHS tapes, which I don't know why my mom chose. She's the one that bought this. My mom's the type of person to just come home with five D uh, with five she VHSs thought it was a film on about basketball. It does look a little wholesome. She's not gonna make the. She's not gonna understand the reference of like a dude holding two basketballs near his crotch. To be representative of testicles. She thought it was angels in the outfield? Probably. Yeah. You know, this was like, this came out in 1998. She was even more fob at the time. and did I not can't un- believe this came out in 98. Yeah, man. Because it still hits. I love the jokes. They're so fast. They're so absurd. And I I really liked Squeak. I think Squeak, aside from, like, oh, outside of all this absurdity, just actually a good actor, man. Like the way he actually reacts with all this stuff, even his like monologue at the end when he's dressed as a pineapple. He, <laughs> the pineapple that gets launched into the stands, into the fireworks. <laughs> um, he he definitely has a lot of screen time and intense, like, motivation in his lines. Yeah. Um, that are given to the most inse- inconsequential character ever. Yeah. Like, well, they that's just, the best they part. They gave him the most intense things, and like, he's the reason why they realize the two guys realize that you know what they're doing and why they're doing it also we haven't even talked about the make a wish foundation oh yeah that is yes. a big part of this film that's run by miss jenna what's her name jenna reed jen reed uh, i mean in real life her name is yesenia yes yeah, being bleed or something like that yeah so that uh with joey who who is having a liver operation and all he wants he's a big fan of cooper not that big of a fan of like reamer or squeak no and he's just all he wants is to like hang out with the team. Um, this whole movie reminds me of, and I'm, I don't like to really talk about much of it, but it reminds me of a story that Kanye West once told. Which what story? What are you talking about? Where Kanye West went to go meet with a kid uh, from the Make a Wish Foundation, whose uh-huh. wish was to meet Kanye West. And how to go? What and happened? so he goes and meets this kid, and uh, he's he's talking to the kid, and he goes, "Hey, he's like." Uh, He's like, you know, kids wish for anything. Uh, I was just talking to a kid who wished that he could meet Tom Cruise and stuff like that. How come he wished for Kanye West? How come he wished to meet me? And the kid goes, someone could have wished for Tom Cruise. (laughs) Wait, are you serious? And I just love little crushes to Kanye's ego. Like like that. Become huge. Because you know for the rest of his life, he's thinking about that 
But he's like, I gotta be the next Tom Cruise. Yeah, like that kid wanted to meet Tom but Cruise. But that kid over was just me. like, Oh, I didn't know we could wish for Tom Cruise. Man. I got I Kanye like, instead. Yeah, I, I heard a song and thought, Yeah, why not Kanye? Let's see what happens. That's <laughs> fucked up, dude. Uh, but this Make a Wish Foundation is way better than mm. even like the Ronald McDonald House of Fun, <laughs> <laughs> which I throw my change into every time I go to McDonald's. Oh, do you? I imagine that. Yeah. Actually, I use the app. I don't actually get change from McDonald's oh, you anymore. I have the McDonald's app. I like when we first meet all of the kids from this foundation <laughs> because they're like getting loaded into this van and like Coop and Reamer are meeting Miss Reed for the first time. And Reamer's Can trying. Can sign to- these? Yeah, and he's like, okay, and then pulls up two, two big basket balls up to her chest. He's like, all right. Reamer comes from the cuts, ch- is checking out Miss Reed, and has a pretzel that is obviously made from one of the food stands in the stadium. No, he no Christian. What? <laughs> he baked it himself. Reamer made that. It also goes good with mustard. Christian, Reamer made that himself. <laughs> and he also later on made poppy seed muffins. Yeah. And like, what else did he... He gives... When... when uh. The owner of the team dies. He he comes to the uh, will reading, thinking it's like a viewing. <laughs> comes with like flowers that say like you know rest in peace. He has a reef. He's just like hitting people reef, in yeah. the face with this huge. <laughs> yeah, and he finds out. Oh, it's not a viewing. Hey, Miss Reed, I got these for you. <laughs> he's such a simp. Uh, you know what? I think he's a genius. I think he's similar to you. The way that. There's a scene where well, he's I talking. Think you're a piece of shit. I'm all right. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> Thanks, dude. There's a scene in this movie where Reamer's <laughs> talking to the rival owner <laughs> because the rival owner's trying to explain to him like, "Hey, if you if you like purposefully lose, I'm gonna make you fucking rich." Yeah. And Reamer's like not understanding it. He's not getting it. He's uh, he, just pissing him off. He kind of does get it because in the next game. He's like sitting in a massage chair with a golden necklace. And yeah, later on he, he does. sells out for it. And honestly, Reamer Reamer plays this game right. That's you. That's definitely what you would be. And I would still be Coop because I'd be in it for the love of the game. Give me the money. <laughs> and you'd be making out with whoever the playmate of 1998 was I, in a I hot tub. Wish I could make out with the playmate of 1998. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's actually whoever that playmate was. 100%. Because these guys have some crazy pull with these celebrities. Well, I mean, it's a universal film. That's true. So somehow they had some, they got backing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what I read was that they were doing this film in the daytime and making South Park at night. Really? South Park season two at night. I found out that Squeak is actually a good friend of them, of theirs, and is like featured in South Park, featured in Team America, nice. and other projects that they make. And it makes me so happy. I looked at recent pictures of uh, Squeak, and he looks like Anderson Cooper now. <laughs> He's like gray haired glasses. Silver Same Fox. Same face. Yeah, yeah. But with gray hair and glasses. But still 5'4. That guy he looks is small. Like, what is that comedian? Fuck. That was in. Uh... Bill, Ma- Bill Mahar. Yeah, dude. I'm talking about Bill fucking Mahar. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'm trying to fill in. So I'm trying mad. to fill in while you're so taking mad. 20 so minutes to think, mad. dude. So just, I'm done. I'm done. No, um, he was in that fucking improv movie you had me watch, and like he was in the oh, Homeboy with the glasses, the redhead. Yeah, with like, and he's like also in that weird HBO documentary yes! about about, about, action, about um, action park. Yes. Okay, yes, I know exactly what you're exact, talking about. Okay. That guy. Shout out to him. Uh, Please put a picture up of I'll him. I'll put a picture up of him. Um, Clarence Davis? I don't know what his name is. You can say anything to me. I might have a C. His, his, mind, his face is like in my mind right now. God damn, I love you. Uh, I love you too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, you know, they only say Squeak's real name once in this movie. I, I didn't even catch it. And the, like when we first meet him on the driveway, they keep calling him Little Bitch and Squeak. And they're yeah. like, guys, my name's Kenny. And they're like, okay, Little Bitch. <laughs> Oh, nice. They say it once, and that's when he gets like terrorized by the freaking dog in the backyard. It's a Rottweiler. It's a beautiful puppy, honestly. Beautiful. I love. Honestly, the um, one of the reasons why I didn't want to watch Doom is because in the first few minutes, there's a lot of animal testing, and like there's four dogs in a cage that look very abused. I didn't like it at well, all. Well, me wa- finishing that movie, I'll tell you, spoiler alert, no animals die. You don't see animals die. Well, those dogs were abused and in cages, and I didn't appreciate that. Mm. Anyways. Um... <laughs> Um, no, I, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking, I'm losing it, Karen. <laughs> Karen's in the studio. Shout out to Karen. Hi. Uh, I do like that Kenny sticks with him the whole time though. I I do think it's like, I like that you're referring to him as Kenny now. 
That's so respectful of you. You're not um, calling him bitch or squeak. Well, and also, okay, here's the story. That Here's the anecdote I was going to say. Little bitch. Uh, when I was on the football <laughs> team uh, on the JV, there was a freshman team below us, and there was a kid on the team that we used to call little bitch. Uh, oh, and they always just mean. say it was because of this movie. But I'd never seen this movie, so I never got it. But now I get it because he looks like little bitch. He looks like squeak. Yeah. Little bitch is so much worse than squeak. I'd rather be called squeak. Uh, you know what? Little bitch grew up. I know. Dated uh, one of our friends. Really? Yeah, I'll talk about it off mic. Big bitch is what mm-hmm. he is now. Well, he's oh. an okay guy now. I know a guy named Shortcake, a little tangent, and that's it's the worst nickname I've ever heard of. And like He literally introduces himself as, hi, I'm Shortcake. And I'm like, I'd rather call you little bitch or squeak. <laughs> is he gay? No. Damn. <laughs> no. Oh, well, no, I'm the <laughs> asshole. <laughs> what did you think of all the teams when oh. the league actually starts? The teams are great. But what's one better than the teams are the cheerleaders. All all raunchy cheerleaders. And the who's the announcer guy that's super perverted? <laughs> that's Al Michaels. Al Michaels, the first time we who see him. Who does actual like football announcing. He has the voice for it. And Bob Costa is the one who does the fucking like Olympics and shit like that. Oh, he's the other guy? They're, yeah, they're both. Like, this is incredible. They're be- very famous like sports announcers. This is why I love this movie. This is why I love it. It blew my mind the fact that they had Al Michaels. Like, cause Al Michaels is playing a character. Al Michaels is being. I hope that's not Al Michaels. No. Um, but like he's he's a huge pervert and and poor Bob Costa. Yeah. Well, the first thing we hear Al Michaels say is, uh, well, Bob Costa says it's crazy to think that just five years ago they were playing basketball on the driveway, <laughs> and then Al Michaels is like, it's crazy to think that just five years ago. All of those cheerleaders were, we're in, grade in grade school, school and no one says anything. And Melissa, I was watching this with Melissa and she was like, <laughs> what the fuck did I just watch? Oh, Al Michaels holds no bars. He, the, throughout the entire film, just no, perverted. Zero scruples. Even like later on, like, do you remember when the playoffs are going and they're just tired as shit? When they're in month nine of the playoffs? Because it's crazy. Did you see that bracket? Did you see that bracket? I cannot. I, I tried actively to figure out how the game is scored doesn't make any sense if there's like psych outs you could like uh if you miss the home run you could tip it back in or you could keep the ball alive like it's volleyball uh or fuck what was that basketball game we used to play in in elementary school fucking uh knockout Oh, uh, where you would hit other people's balls? And like something and if you got knocked out, you had to like wait to like tip the ball back in to yeah, get back in. I hated that. Ugh, fuck. It's I would we, play this. It's because we weren't good at basketball. I was good in basketball <laughs> in the fifth on, grade relax. when I was bigger than everyone else. Oh, okay. So yeah. I was able to like always uh get the ball. <laughs> what's the what's the name? What, what do you call it? Get like the you're, ball, yeah. When you're center and like they miss, like what do you call it? When A you, rebound. Wanna get the rebound? Or if you or if you were really into it, you'd say get boards. Yeah, when I would get the boards, bro. No, get boards. You when don't I say was, the boards. No, when I get the boards, bro. Gang, gang, motherfucking shit, you. dude. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> um, if you did play basketball, what? do you think you'd be a good closer? Do you think you'd be hitting all those home runs, or do you think you'd be a good base runner? I don't think I'd be good at the game. <laughs> I'm not good at shooting. I don't think I'd be good at any. I can't psych anyone out. I'm too nice yeah, for it. You could psych somebody out. You think out. I could? Yeah. All right. Try. Okay. You try to psych me out right now. What would you say? I'd pull my penis out. Oh, man. But there has to be a violation for that. I don't. I, I actually don't think there is. I feel like. I actually. Hang on. What? I don't think there is. They never pulled their penises. Oh, they showed um, Squeak's ass. Oh, uh, one dude like. Doesn't he bite a finger off or something with a fake hand? He cuts a finger off. Yeah. He cuts his finger off. Like garden scissors or something like that. And it's... (laughs) what? Do you remember the psych out where he just pulls out a sheet of foil and starts chewing it? (laughs) And it makes the guy, like, gag. Can you break that down for me? Yeah, it's because of the fillings in your teeth that makes your feelings feelings hurt. Oh. Because of all the years I watched that, (laughs) I've even tried it as a kid. I put foil in my mouth and I'm like, I don't feel a thing. I don't, this doesn't make me want to throw up. This Do, doesn't. You don't have any fillings? You never had a cavity as a kid? Well, now I've, now I have, a, I, I've had a filling. Let's go chew on some foil, bro. I'm okay. I'm fine with that. We should actually just use that to, for its purpose and like cover food. Uh, or make a fake grill. <laughs> sure. Oh, I remember those days. I would put that over my Invisalign. I would do that. <gasps> um, what was your favorite psych out? The breast milk one. I got it. Well, you love the breast milk one. I mean, how about you let me answer? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite psych out, actually, you know what? Honestly, what was the breast milk? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, dude. I knew it. All of this, they were just 
They did not hold back. With San Francisco, the name of the team was the Fairies. And those cheerleaders are men. All men. Double entendre with fairies. Because it's not spelt like fairies with wings. No. It's because we have a fairy. The, the boat. Yeah, the boat. Yeah, yeah. And they were just made, they got a violation because he was like, it's an Australian joke, not a gay joke. <laughs> Whatever shit it was. But like, it was so clever, I think. And I didn't understand all these jokes when I was a kid. But watching it now, really, really funny. I, I yeah, I just love that they made this film like in their backyard, essentially. Yeah. Like it's clearly just done, like I said earlier, on one set. It's not that fancy. It's just like, it's just them. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's get it done. You know what I think they did right was not introduce too many characters. Because who else is on the team? Oh, they could have, yeah, honestly, a, a film about a baseball team could have introduced 26 people. Yeah. Easily. But we don't know the names of the three other people that were on the beers. No, they don't matter. The team. No, uh, there was the like an two, Asian two guy. A- two Asian guys. Two Asian dudes. Yep. Very inclusive. I love it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I liked this movie. And then one like half black guy. It's uh, how you have a successful team in America. Did you see Otis in this movie? Tuttle? <laughs> I thought Otis was... Uh... <laughs> the big Polynesian man. <laughs> what What other movies? Is he in uh, no 50 clue. First Dates? Maybe. I don't know. Is he the cook in 50 First Dates? It's super possible because he's a big Hawaiian man and 50 First Dates has... A lot of big Hawaiian men. Well, and now I feel vaguely racist. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You could be right and just not racist at all. Thank but he God. is in something else. Uh, a lot. A lot. He's in a lot. And like, uh, so the way that Squeak psychs him out, they have Coop and Reamer have Squeak right on his hand, like these insults. They're like, talk about his mom. I'm like, what? He says, your mother's deaf. And he's like, my Her mom. mother's dead. <laughs> all he says is like, that's probably why she... Didn't move around a lot. And he gets so pissed off. We're at the very end of that game. You, What this movie does a lot is they just add shit in the background. <laughs> yeah, they like do. a very important oh. conversation will happen. And then like Squeak will be getting beat up in the background. Or the baseball game that had a bunch of chickens. Yes. In the background, there's a guy just vacuuming up chickens. Chickens. Just everywhere. Sucking them up into a huge tube. Because it was free range chicken day. <laughs> She's like, these don't make any, these jokes don't make any, there's no, they random. Do, Christian, they do. All random. Because that's why stadiums do like bring your dog day or they do like nurses on the fourth floor day and shit like that. That's what stadiums do to get people in. But specifically the free range chicken that's does how not ridiculous make any it's gonna sense. Be. That's how ridiculous Crazy. it's going to get, sir. And they're all throwing chicken eggs at them. Well, that's fun, actually. That's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I was pissed off when... Uh, when the guy was dying from the hot dog and he was like, when he's choking and it's coming back. Yeah. And just going back into his mouth could have saved them right there. The um, This was <gasps> to Melissa. This was hard for her to watch because like everything that could go wrong went wrong. Right. It's a, it's a, uh, I think you should leave bit. Yes. And that's why we love it. They literally do a hot dog choking bit. Yeah, that's exactly. And I think you should leave. <laughs> Oh, God. Even when they visit Joey after uh, his liver surgery, they're like sitting on his oxygen tube. Well, first they think he's dead. <laughs> first they go running like, into why, his old why? room. And they're like, he's in the room next door. And they run to the next door, and the next door is the morgue. <laughs> and they're you? like, no! <laughs> We're too late! They're like, no, that door! <laughs> and they see him, and he's like, yeah, he's he's fine. He's doing just fine. They accidentally like kick the plug into the... Uh, where his, his pulse is, and so he's flatlining. They think he's dead, and so they get. The, he says, "Where can I find the like the little chest the pads, paddles. the little paddles that George Clooney uses?" And uh, which do you understand that reference? Because George Clooney was in General Hospital. Oh, God, I love you. Mm. You know, like single woman at home at two o'clock in the afternoon in 1995 references. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't have known that until like maybe like five years ago. Well, my mother was a huge <clears throat> General Hospital fan. I watched a lot of General Hospital between the years of. 2003 and 2009. Young George Clooney before George Clooney was who he was. Today. Oh, he wasn't there at that point, but James Franco was. You're kidding. He was in General Hospital? Yeah, then he died, then he came back again as like a stepbrother, like all. What are you making that face, Karen? Wasn't that ER? No, Karen, that's General Hospital. 
I don't know. I have a, are, you, are we all sure? Try me, bro. You think I don't know General Hospital? Sonny Corinthos was married, and he was over there. His secondhand man, Jason, was ma- was going after his wife. And then who comes in? James Franco, who is a what? Art teacher who's banging a girl. Weirdly relevant to real life, because that's what he got in trouble for. And then he got kicked off the show, because what was he doing? Banging chicks as saying it was a drama department thing. You know, we have every right to question your validity in some things, especially since you started off this episode thinking that it was stuck on you. That one, I uh, that, that one I was wrong about. I was. <laughs> this is that baseball movie I was, I was with wrong. Siamese twins. I was pretty wrong. Oh, the about King that and one. I. I was, I was really wrong about that one. Also, the King and I. You're thinking of Big Fish. The King of Siam. I don't know. You're thinking of Big Fish. Of real Big Fish, which, which is, is in, the in movie. this movie. Oh man, Do honestly, you, I real Big Fish should be in every movie. I real Big Fish. Their is covers. The only the first time I've ever heard ska. Was from Real Big Fish. And I was like, oh, oh, they're doing Take On Me? I'm down. I'm honestly pretty sure that's the only time anybody's ever heard Ska for the first time. I've heard of one other Ska band, and I don't remember their name. Is it called? It. Blah, blah, blah. Aquabats. And you're what? not on mic, Karen. Aquabats. No, you're not on mic, Karen. Might be Aquabats. You're I told, her, mic, I told her that she could yell if she wants to say something. Aquabats. There, yeah, and we got it. Aqua Teen Hunger forces the TV show. That I can only watch so much of. I, I can literally get five seconds into that show. It's just um, half of the Adult Swim oh. shows I can't I can't watch. Anyway, rate me, rate the show, rate the movie, rate the movie. I'm gonna give it a solid four point five out of five. I give it a four. It gets a little. It's slow very for funny. Me. It 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 does, but even the, the slow end. even the slow parts have punctuative jokes. Yeah, that make it worth watching. They they know what they're doing with this. It's like when they're fighting. I'm like, okay, hurry up and oh my god. So after the scene where like Squeak gets launched as a pineapple and they're like, dude, like, yeah, I was like wrong. And like you were wrong and like we were both wrong. But like, you know, let's just make up. And then they just start making out (laughs) super hard for a very, very (laughs) long time. And it is just I was screaming. You want to try? No, I knew that you were going to ask. And I knew that if I brought it up, you were going to ask. And I, there's a well, hard bring, to know. Why even bring it up? Then, you know, We've know. already pecked. We've already pecked before. Um, you surprised. We'll put up that video. Can I see you guys? Get it. Get it. Warm it. Warm it. Yeah. I was just. Oh. There wasn't enough lip balm. Oh, my God. Wait, we need. We need. Yeah. Well, you surprise kissed me at my at Melissa's birthday party there's last year. There's a video year. of it? Yeah. You like ninja kissed me. Real quick. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. The ninja kiss was after you accepted a kiss. So you can act like the ninja kiss was a thing that I forced on you. But two seconds before that video was taken, you accepted it's a kiss. It's situational. You I have to know what's going to happen. I have to kiss. know what's going to happen. Well, you like my kisses. No, it's just was like, I don't know. They're just like two things on your mouth. Your, your lips. And it's just like, it's fine. It's just like contact. It's just contact, dude. What do you, you said a four out of five for this? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, my best person on set award is... You don't know? I have mine. Jesse McCarthy. Jenny McCarthy? Jenny McCarthy. Jesse McCarthy is... The singer. <laughs> I like Jenny... Uh, you actually, her name is fucking Jenny, her name is actually, dumbass. Her name is actually Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. If, you wanna, if you're actually going to split hairs here. I'm just reading what's on the fucking cast list, bitch. You should click on it because it's Wahlberg. It's okay. She's married to Donnie. My Wi-Fi is slow. I don't want to click on it. She's married to Donnie. Yeah, no, I'm not doubting that the she's not. The best of the Wahlberg. You said Jesse McCarthy. Well, he's the worst of the singers. Okay, mine goes to Dion Bacar. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he, the guy that plays Squeak Scolari. He has a last name. Squeak Scolari. Kenny Scolari. Yes, of course. He's not fucking Cher. He doesn't, he's, he has more, he's not Beyonce. Well, Beyonce has a last name, but. Um, Knowles. Yes, Knowles. Carter. I understand. She has two Knowles, last Carter. names. Knowles, Carter. Yes, my apology. <laughs> With that, I got Jenny McCarthy. Uh, who's yeah, Wahlberg. <laughs> Fuck this, whatever. Yeah, I love this movie. Karen has something to say. Mmm, catching us. That's his job. That's his job. It's because it's not listed. Oh, I do want to know how much they spent on this. Uh, it is actually a notorious bomb. So <sighs> had a budget of twenty-three million dollars, Christian. 15. Karen, do you want to guess? She guesses 10. You guys are both incredibly wrong. You guys are just like, you guys are dumb. Eight. It made $7 million. 
It was pretty close. Not that off, it dude. Made seven million dollars. That sucks. On a budget of twenty-three, uh, Why? it is statistically one of the biggest bombs in history. Man. Yeah. I mean, I would consider this like um, not a cult classic, but like it hopefully, like got money back. Oh, people know it. It didn't get any of its money that back, sucks. sir. Because I talk about this, like people reference this a lot that I talk to, at least, and like it's incredible to know that other people. Know something that's so near and dear to my heart. I've never once heard anybody ever reference this movie. <laughs> really? I've brought this up like 20 times. Multiple to you. times. Yeah. Uh, but you're the only person who this I've ever This movie like, and We're the Millers are just like things that you like dodge. Well, because We're the Millers, I, I, I've i seen We're the Millers. That's why I, I was like, the other one. You ones, weren't a fan of it? It's okay. It has the guy uh, with, the, with the eyebrows from Maze Runner. Will Poiter. Is that his name? Uh, yeah, Incredible I actor. believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be in the new Guardians. That's what I hear. Yeah, man. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, he does a great job on SNL. Mm. Never seen him as a guest star, but I would. I'll no, watch he was that. a regular. Shut up. Really? Oh shit! I'm thinking of Jason Sudeikis. It's whatever. Okay. I'm gonna say. <laughs> um. Any thought? Any final thoughts yeah, about this movie? I got you. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> What's your deal? <laughs> no, I don't have any final thoughts. Okay. Good. Good. Because I have a bunch. Uh. Because I love this movie so much. So. Shout outs to all of these jokes that we've missed in talking about this film, but I love how uh, Jenny McCarthy. Jesse. Uh, no. <laughs> I love you fucking fuck. I love how Jenny McCarthy uh, is <clears throat> offering, you know, some physical favors for the rival owner. And he's like, well, you know, you could come visit me sometime and, you know, just put in some rugs. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it. And she's like actually like putting in rugs into the corners of his <laughs> These fireplace. corners are really difficult. Yeah, and she's like exhausted at this point and is like goes to mas- massage his like traps and he's like, "Well, I mean, now that you're done with that, you could uh, go buff my lobby if you catch my drift." <laughs> and she's actually like buffing the lobby and it is so funny. It is like, like that stuff that I understood as a kid. Yeah, yeah, and then she polishes the knob. Yes, she Wait, does she actually polish a knob? Yeah, remember she like pulls it and she's got all the silver on her mouth. Oh, she does, dude. I love that. Um, Squeak, <gasps> when he first moves in, he's like, "Wait, I get to live in here? Does this like couch pull out into a bed?" And like, "Yeah, but that's Jenkins, <laughs> and that's the dog's. <laughs> that's the dog's bed." And I uh, yes. yeah, like just a box, right? It's a cardboard box with a thin blanket in it. And then when they leave, he's like, "Now, right?" And he's like setting up the bed with the blanket. Setting up the bed, he opens the windows. He's like, "Well, at least I'm part of the team." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Rottweiler comes out and like Such destroys him. Dog. That dog's my best person on set, by the way. Didn't you, wasn't yours, Jesse no, McCarthy? No, it's the dog. You gotta figure your it's shit the out. Dog. <laughs> you have to it's figure dog. your shit out. Okay, shout out to the dog. Um, you you have no other thoughts, dog. That's all you got. No, I I, I do. I want to apologize for mm. waiting this long to see this film because I really thoroughly enjoyed this film, especially this after movie. watching half of a film that I just could not talk about. I'm glad we watched this one. Yeah, baddies. If you want to check it out, um, it's only streaming on Philo. Philo, Fubu, Philo. F- no, F2. Fubu is a. It's a sports thing. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it's on. Fubu is a brand that my brother wore in the early 2000s. I think it's also a streaming service. No. Type in Fubu streaming service and see what your algorithm tells you. Uh, if I'm right, what do I get? Something. Something. <laughs> I know you're wrong. Fubu TV. Shut up. F-U-B-U? Fubu TV. Suck my fucking dick. You're fucking Suck. blind. That says Fubo. You're fucking blind. That's because you wear sunglasses inside. Hey, and you, bro, you don't know. Hey, you thought this you. movie was stuck on you. You, you thought this bro. movie was, you thought it was <laughs> Jesse McCarthy. You you're <laughs> fucking stupid. I had you, bro. You had no, you no, you knew you were wrong. You were ready for it. No, I'm ready. ready I know it. Fubo. I used to wear Fubo. Fubu, Not Fubu, proud, but I knew Fubo. Fubu TV. No, shut up. It's on Philo. That is, if you want to watch it, it's on Philo TV. That's P-H-I-L-O. But, you know, rent it on Amazon. It's really funny. My girlfriend, my fiance really liked it, actually, um, With even with all the dumb jokes. This guy actually likes it. Big surprise. <sighs> and we're out of here. You fucking dumbass. <laughs> oh, my God. That was okay. Uh, Karen, any last words? You didn't watch the movie. Oh, my God. No. No. Okay. Baddies, you can follow me at Christian as Asthma. You can follow this dumbass at somewhere. Follow the podcast at ICBTV Podcast. This guy. 
buy some merch because we need this we need money so that we could properly educate this idiot because she needs to hire a new host <laughs> you gotta fucking read you're so upsetting you're so upsetting dude i look this says fubu tv fubo fubu oh it looks different than a you learn english <sighs> You bitch ass. Why don't you tell me when I first moved here that I don't know English? You don't even know how to read that. Oh, All right. Bye. Can't be that bad, though.